Hey everybody, I'm Steve Schmid, uh, operator and owner of Simple Pump Company. Uh, what I'm going to do today is walk you through a typical pitless style installation. Uh, one thing I want to talk about first is, you know, how do you determine whether or not you're able to do this installation yourself or you need to, to go find a well professional to do it. Uh, a pitless adapter uh, configuration is where the submersible pipe actually exits through the ground, uh, through the casing underground. Uh, these are the, the much easier installations as there's not much work in regards to wiring and uh, replacing the cap. Uh, we do recommend that if you have a pipe through the cap, that's where the submersible pipe actually comes up through the cap that's on the top of the well, uh, that you use a uh, professional to do that because uh, carry the cap carries the full weight of the submersible and there's a lot of steps that you, know, you need the right kind of tooling and, and expertise in order to do. Uh, but today we can still walk you through the entire installation, uh, including how you change the well cap and install the pump. Uh, so that, that's uh, what we're going to cover today, okay? All right, first, so let's take a look at how your pump is going to be delivered. Uh, you're going to have a tube or a series of tubes, depending on how many pipe you have, and a box or two boxes, depending on the configuration of your pump. Uh, you can see here we've got a fairly shallow well. Uh, you can look on these labels right here and it will show you what components are packed in which package. Uh, and here you're typically going to have your drop pipe, you're going to have your pump, your handle, uh, your pumping cylinder, and then your box is typically going to be your well cap uh, and the rest of your hardware. Uh, so the first step that we're going to do is we're actually going to unpack all of this stuff and we're going to lay it out on the table uh, and inventory and make sure that we've got everything that was on the packing slip. Okay, so we'll do that and we'll see you in a minute. All right, so we've unpacked everything, the box and the tube, uh, and laid everything out. And what we're gonna do is check to make sure we have everything. So this is an 80 foot set, so there's nine drop pipe kits. Uh, so we've got our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine drop pipe kits. You can see here that we've got our weep hole kit. We wanna make sure it's on the end because we wanna do this one last. Uh, we've got our pump head assembly, which includes uh, your riser tube and pump head. It's got your pump rod here. Uh, we've got the lever link arm assembly. Uh, we also have our pumping cylinder. This is the 125 CA we're going to be installing today. Uh, 36 LA, so our 36 inch lever arm. We have our T-handle tool for installation. Uh, over here, we've got some components that came with this, the pump. We've got our eight, our nine rod guides, because we have to have a rod guide in each one of our drop pipe. We've got our safety tool for our installation. Uh, we've got our street elbow, our hose adapter. This is our one inch nipple. Uh, we've got a clevis pin. We've got a rod extender because there's uh, eight pipe. You get one rod extender with every eight pipe. You've got your brass shims for in the, when you connect the handle together, as well as your quarter 20 bolts to mount the bracket to the pump head. Uh, additionally on this order, we have a seal kit. So this is for later use for your first maintenance. Uh, they have the check valve and gauge kit, which we'll install at the end. This allows you to pump into pressure. Uh, we now supply a small tube of anti-seize. The anti-seize is to be used on any external threaded connections where you have dissimilar metals coming together. Uh, what we mean there is, for example, with this Beauchart cap that we have in this install, the stainless steel screws will be threaded into the cast iron cap. So we're gonna to wanna to put a little bit of anti-seize on there. The same thing applies if you have an aluminum cap, you're gonna to wanna to put some anti-seize on the bolts that connect into that cap. Uh, so that's the, the point of that anti-seize. Make sure you uh, use that when you do your install. As well as a small tube of Loctite for the sucker rods. Uh, lastly, we have our well cap. So this is our pitless well cap for the Beauchart for a six inch well, which is what we're doing today. Uh, it's all coming assembled and it has the split flange which will go here uh, which is how we mount the pump as well as the hardware for that. Uh, we also provide a roll of Teflon tape so that you can tape up all your joints and that there's no leaking. Uh, you also have uh, a set of instructions that comes with it. Uh, so you know based on on what this well requires and what was on the packing slip everything is here. These are all the parts that we're going to need to install the system. So let's talk about the tools. So the tools that 
uh, that we have here for this installation uh, include two adjustable wrenches here. Uh, this will be to tighten the pipe. Uh, I just have a full set of uh, SAE Allen wrenches uh, so that we have what we need to tighten the well cap, the, the split flange down and tighten the bolts for the, for the lever uh, link arm assembly. Uh, we have two 5 16 wrenches. There are flats on the, uh, on the sucker rods, so this is used to tighten those. Uh, you could use crescent wrenches if you don't have 5 16 inch wrenches. You could use the crescent wrenches to tighten uh, the sucker rods as you go. Uh, you could also use the, the pliers. So uh, you'll see as we go which tools may be interchangeable here. I do have two 9 16 wrenches to tighten the bolts on the Beauchart cap. Uh, again, you could also use the crescent wrenches, which we have here, to do that as well. So a couple different options, depending on what kind of tools you have. Uh, you can go with a much smaller group and, and, and still accomplish what you need to accomplish. Okay, so now that we've pulled out all of our parts, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to sanitize everything. Anything that's going to touch the water, we want to clean in a mixture of water and bleach-based solution. So. Obviously, our drop pipe are going to be clean on the inside, the outside. Uh, we're going to want to clean our pumping cylinder, want to clean the inside of our pump head assembly, our pump rod, uh, as well as our rod guides, because all those are going to be touching the water. Uh, so what we're going to do now is, is I'm going to step away, and we'll, we'll be right back, and, and, and we'll get going with, the, with, the san with sanitizing the parts. All right, so we've got our bucket here with our 20 to 1. Uh, mixture of bleach to water and what we're going to do is we're going to sanitize all these pieces. What I like to do is have just a couple rags. I'll throw throw one in the water there and then what I'm going to do is take one of these rags and I'm going to cut it up to make it a little bit smaller so that I can actually feed it through the pipe uh, so that we can make sure to get the inside of the pipe clean. So we've got a little rag here, get that wet, put it in there, it's wet. So the way I like to do it is I like to start with the rod and I clean the rod off. And then I grab the rag, actually use the rod to push the rag through. Got our little black or blue uh, caps on the end here. Might as well just get all these off. So now we've got our little rag here. The outside or the inside of the pipe is clean. So next, we're going to take clean the outside of the pipe. And that'll dry as we're doing the next one. So we'll just do this for all of the pieces of drop pipe. There is bleach in here, so I recommend uh, make sure that it's, you're wearing clothes that you don't care about getting bleach on. Oop. Pushed past the rag there. So washing this obviously prevents any kind of bacteria or just grit or dirt from uh, getting into your well. You know, there's shavings from the manufacturing process of the pipe and things like that that can get in there. So definitely keeps things clean and it's your water source. So obviously you're gonna wanna make sure that's, that's nice and clean and never, never disrupted. All right, now all the pipe is done. Uh, next, we'll clean the pump components. All right, so now let's get the components cleaned up. Uh, first, get our pump rod out of here. It's gonna be sent in a cardboard sheath because this is ground and polished, so it needs to stay smooth. Uh, so we'll take our rag and clean this part, 
put it over here. I want to get our pump head assembly, make sure that it's got clean, you know, we can run some water on the inside. Get that cleaned. We we'll want to get all of our rod guides, get them a little dunk, make sure they're good. Any of these fixtures that are touching water. And then lastly, our pumping cylinder. It's also a good time to just make sure that it's working correctly. Remember, it's a uh, a uh, double check valve style pump. So you just put it in the water and start pumping. So full disclosure here, guys, we, uh, we need to make sure to remove the rags from the bucket before we actuate that cylinder. Uh, during this video, we actually sucked the uh, smaller piece of the rag up into the cylinder. Uh, so we had to disassemble it to get it out. Uh, these, these pumps definitely will pull some suction. So make sure that there's nothing in that bucket when you test the cylinder inside the bucket. Okay, so we've now cleaned all the pieces that we need to for the initial installation. Uh, so what we're gonna do next is we're actually gonna step into the installation and we're gonna start with removing the well cap. Uh, so we'll, we'll get back in a second. All right, so now our first step of the actual installation here, we're gonna change out the well caps. Uh, before you do this step, you need to go and make sure that the power is off for the pump because you're gonna be disconnecting some wires and then re-splicing them back together. Uh, you're gonna wanna make sure, like I said, that the breaker is shut down. So we've already shut down the breaker. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is remove the existing cap. This one is a bit more of a cover than a cap, uh, but we'll get this one off of here. It's a couple, two pieces. There's another piece here. We'll have to get that loose. As you can see is you've got your group of wires here, usually some spider webs. Um, so we've got our set up here. We're gonna need to disconnect these to get this piece off, which will be necessary. Uh, so we're just gonna pull off the existing electrical tape. If you're new to electrical work, uh, my suggestion would be to uh, take a picture. Uh, usually the colors will line up, uh, like red to red, black to black, uh, usually white to white. Uh, you can see this is white to yellow here. Uh, so if it's something new and you're not as comfortable with it, uh, I suggest going ahead and taking a picture so that you don't connected incorrectly because that would be very bad. And on that point, you know, if you're not, if you're not comfortable with this type of work, uh, hire, hire a trained professional. There, there's no reason to take that risk and, and cause, you know, damage to your submersible pump uh, or your electrical system. All right, so we've got all of our wire nuts off. Uh, we got to get this other piece of the cap off of here. We are going to reuse this fitting. All right, all right we got that loose. Uh, now that's disconnected. When we reconnect this one to the new, to the new one, we're going to put a little Teflon tape just to make it uh, so it comes off a little easier. Um, so now. We've got this disconnected. We're gonna go grab the cap. So being that this is a two-piece cap, we're going to take all the bolts out. We have the bottom piece of our cap. Grab our 
Teflon tape just so that it's a little easier to get this thing off in the future if it needs to be taken off. Connection there. The wires are going to come right back up through here. Pump wires up. Got a little set screw here in the on the inside that we need to loosen up. This is a 5:30 seconds. There we got this piece over the top. We can take and connect our wires back together. Take our little bit of electrical tape. Sometimes you can reuse the electrical tape that was there, but if it's a bit of an older pump, you're not gonna be able to do that. So now we wanna put this back in here. There's a, there's a fair amount of wire typically in there. Uh, you may feel that when you're starting to install the pipe. Uh, you know, our, our pump is going to be going through here. So what I like to do is try and get this back in there in such a way that, that it'll give it a bit more of a clear path for the, for the pump to go down. Okay. Once that's in there, we're going to get our top on. It'll be a process here for tightening these up. Grab our wrenches. Now you're gonna to wanna to tighten these in a, a star pattern. It's, uh, it shows it on the uh, instructions for the Beauchart cap, which come in your box. Because if you, uh, if you don't do them in a star pattern, it could actually crack crack the cap and we want to obviously avoid that. I want to make sure this is nice and and level as well. You know, as you tighten the, the cap down, you can see we've got a little bit of a short piece of conduit there, but that's going to be okay. So keep keep going with our pattern here. You don't want to don't want to get it too tight cuz you don't want to break off the tabs. All right, we're getting close here. All right, so for the initial tightening, uh, once we've used the pump, it may settle a little bit more and we'll want to retighten them up. Uh, but for now, uh, well cap is installed. Uh, typically, we recommend that you keep the power off uh, during the remainder of the install, uh, just in case a wire gets caught and we don't have any kind of a short. Um, but now we'll move on to starting the uh, installation of the pump. All right, so now the next step is to start installing the pump. Uh, the first step I like to take is I like to prepare all the pipe uh, with the Teflon tape. And my preferred method, because we want to have about five eighths of engagement uh, into the threads on the PVC pipe, uh, is to actually get that Teflon tape on and then make a mark using a tape measure, five eighths from the bottom. Uh, and by the bottom, I mean from the end of the pipe here, uh, in the end of the Teflon tape, and then when we're putting it together, uh, we have a good gauge of, of knowing when to stop. So we're gonna go ahead and prep that now. What you wanna do is, you know, three to, three to five. Usually I'll do about four wraps of Teflon tape. This isn't extra thick stuff that, that, that you can find out there. It's a normal size, so. Uh, Four to five is three to five is is fine. I want to make sure that you're going in the direction of the threads, so that when you're actually connecting, going into the female fitting, it's not trying to bunch up the the tape. Okay. We got the Teflon tape on. Now I'm going to take my pen, go from the bottom here, go to 5 eighths, just draw a line in one of the threads, 
Now, just to remember, five eighths is, is we don't want any more than that. All right, that's the maximum that you want to go because we don't want to cause an issue with the rod guide getting crushed in the female coupling. All right, so uh, next step, actually, we're going to put the pumping cylinder on the first pipe. Uh, so we're going to obviously want to end on our weep hole pipe, which is right here. You can see the red marks. So we're going to start on this side. We do now offer or provide a little bit of Loctite. And it, it's a medium Loctite, so it's not permanent. Uh, but what we do suggest is that you uh, use a little dab on each of the, the rod connections. But just the rod connections, no other connections require it. So we're going to expose the male threads on the on the cylinder it's the first thing that gets uh, connected. Open up our Loctite here. Put a little dab on there. Doesn't take much, Loctite's uh, pretty good stuff. So we're gonna take our first connection here and we're going to thread it together. Got to go get a one of our wrenches. We do not have a flat on the piston rod. Grab our 5 16 wrenches. Get ready to do that work. All right. So We're gonna grab the piston rod here with the pliers. Then we're gonna put our 5 16 on the flat and tighten this up. There is a dimple on the female rod end that acts as a lock. Uh, we wanna do the lock tight just to add a little extra strength. Okay, once that's connected, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna bring this up and thread in to our pipe. This one has no rod guide, uh, so you can make that as tight as you need to, to get it, you know, hand tight and a half a turn or so is tight enough. Uh, everybody's strength is a little different. Some people's hand tight would be plenty tight, but they are tapered threads, uh, which means that a little bit extra tight, once it feels tight, tightens it quite a bit. So we're just gonna get a little bit more. There we go. Now, exciting time, we get to put our first length of pipe in. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll go do that now. All right, so we've got our first piece here. We've got our safety tool. Wanna make sure we have that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work this down through. There's an O-ring in there. So it may take a little bit of twisting and, and pushing to get it by there, but you know the, it's intentional to have a tight tolerance so that when we put the pump head assembly in there, it's nice and tight. So we're almost there. All right. Like we said, you know, we may encounter, we're gonna put our safety tool down so that we don't lose it. And it looks like it's gonna up yep, straight past that pitless adapter all the way down. All right, first piece is now in. So what we're gonna do next is put our rod guide in. I wanna make sure we have a rod guide in every single one of these connections. Goes down in, and then we're gonna grab our next rod. So we've got our, right here, we've got our um, Loctite. So we've got our 5 16 wrenches. So we're gonna put a little dab of Loctite right here on the end of the rod. Take our rod. Get 
tighten it on here. Now what we suggest is that you hold the bottom rod and only turn the top rod. Now what this does is this prevents us from possibly loosening any connection that's below. Uh, so keep that one tight. We're gonna go out to there. Don't wanna, you wanna get them tight, but you know, they, they can break if you over tighten them. So make sure you don't get too crazy. Uh, next, we're gonna put on our pipe. So you wanna try and get as high as you can here. Um, you don't wanna bend the rod too much, but as you can see, it's, it's pretty flexible. We're gonna bring it back, put it in the pipe. Bring it over, get that threaded. Make sure we don't cross thread it. Grab our wrenches here. Okay, so we got it to hand tight and we're just at our line. Okay, so that's our first drop pipe or our second drop pipe that we've connected. So we're gonna grab this, get the coupling underneath it, put the safety tool back on and it fits right in between those bolts. Pretty light for now, so don't need to worry about that. Uh, one thing we keep an eye on is that protrusion of the, the sucker rod. Uh, you want it to be somewhere between four to six inches it's about five and a half right now. Um, if it gets outside of that, it's not a huge deal. Make sure you're tightening the pipe uh, as per the instructions and, and what we're talking about here. Uh, if you get to the top and it's less than four or more than six, we've got some ways we can make some adjustments. So uh, don't compromise making sure that the, the pipe is tightened correctly, okay? Uh, so let's grab our next rod guide. Put that on down into our spot, grab our next rod. Put our little dab of Loctite on here. Okay, grab our next pipe. Get this tightened. Not gonna need to go down to the full five eighths. It's nice and tight. All right, so feels like we got a torque arrestor down here. That's not uncommon. Uh, usually what you can do is you can wiggle it and get right past it because the torque arrestor, different than a, there's some spacers that cover the whole entire inside of the well. It's good to talk to whoever installed the pump or people in the area to see what they use. A torque arrestor has quite a bit of space in it and you can usually wiggle around and find your way through that torque arrestor like we just did right there. All right, I think we're in the water now, so we're gonna actuate the pump and see yep we can feel the water so uh, now by actuating this we can prevent that vapor lock situation from happening we got three more pipe left uh, so we're probably one stick into the water uh, and now we can finish up the rest of the pipe All right, so we're down to the very last pipe. This is the weep hole pipe, which as you can see, it's marked very clearly that it's the top pipe. Uh, this is our ninth piece of pipe. Uh, it's starting to get a little heavy. So what we're gonna do for the last pipe is we're gonna use our T-handle tool uh, just to make it easier to set it down on the safety tool. As you can see, you know, you're bringing it down, holding that coupling, and as it gets heavy, you wanna, you really don't wanna squash your fingers. So you take and put your pieces together here just want to make sure it's nice and tight so it doesn't come disconnected. Uh, and then what you're going to do is you're actually going to put it on the end, 
of your last drop of this of this drop pipe. Thread it in a little bit, not too tight, just maybe too tight. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put the final pipe on. this nice and tight. We're gonna get our safety tool set. And now as you can see when you bring it down, you can grab it here and it gives you a bit more, you know, structure to hold on to when you're when you're dropping that last pipe. Then you just grab your wrenches here. Take that off. We will put our final rod guide in. We have none left, which is a good sign. So we're gonna measure this protrusion here. We're gonna set our tape measure on the top of the stainless coupling and look right to this ridge, not the threads, just the ridge. And you can see that it is just pretty much right smack dab at five inches, which that's the optimal. Somewhere between four and six is fine. Five is perfect. Um, so now the next step, uh, we can go ahead and we can put the pump rod on and then we'll continue to put the rest of the pump head assembly together. So we're going to put our Loctite on. Tighten this down. Use one of our Crescent wrenches to Get this nice and tight. Okay. Now we've got the one inch nipple here is what we're gonna to use to connect that top drop pipe to our pump head assembly. And this definitely needs some Teflon tape. Makes it easier to get it nice and tight. Okay. So we've got now our pump head assembly. We've got our pit rod here. We're gonna get that hand tight. Then we're gonna put this down and over. Now, there is a press fit guide about right here. And what that does is that keeps this centered so that it doesn't wear out the seals. Uh, quicker than, than you know would, would normally happen. So it may take a little bit of moving around to, to get it through that guide. And it'll come through and then when you're getting it through the rod gland, you're gonna have the same kind of situation. Now what you wanna do is be very careful putting it through that rod gland. The, the stud on this pump rod is pretty sharp and you don't wanna, you don't wanna damage those seals. So you get this on, you're gonna tighten it down. We're gonna grab our pliers here. Now we're gonna cinch this one down nice and tight. This one, there is no minimum tight. You're doing two, you know, two stainless, all stainless stuff. So get that nice and tight. Okay, so the next step, uh, we're gonna set the height of the pump head assembly, and we're gonna set the orientation. All right, so now we've got our pump head assembly attached. Uh, it's time to set the orientation uh, and the height of the uh, pump head assembly. Uh, now, based on this little uh, shack here, uh, we're gonna probably want to orient this pretty much parallel with the way the bump out is on the cap. So we're gonna turn it around. It's gonna be, it's gonna be about like this. So your pumping action is gonna be from over here. Uh, 
So what we're gonna do, and, and this can you know get a little bit, it can get away from people if this is too heavy. So it's best to use a, a partner to, to help with this on a deeper set. But you're gonna lift up, remove that safety tool. And then this, you know, being the same size as the cylinder is gonna come right down through here. And if you look, it's moving on its own, right? So we don't wanna, we wanna get, keep an eye on that. Uh, your pumping height, you don't want to have to go too high above your shoulders. You also cannot have more than a foot of the riser tube with this single height riser tube uh, above the cap. And if you have a PHA 47, which is the double height, then you can't have more than two feet. Basically, half of it has to be below the cap. Uh, and that's for the forces that, uh, that, are apply, that are applied back and forth when there's some very minimal deflection, but you want the weight of that heavy pump head assembly to be balanced between below and above the cap. Um, so for the particular customer here, we're gonna set it a little bit lower because uh, she's not quite very tall. So we're gonna put it about here. And then this is very important. We always tighten the pinch bolt first. So this is the pinch bolt. These are the ones on top, they are loose. If they're tight, then what's going to happen is this is not going to come closer together. If that doesn't come closer together, it doesn't actually grip this riser tube. And when you use the pump, it's just going to work its way down and it's going to sit right on top of there. I get a lot of calls about this uh, and it's, it's clear in the instructions. Just make sure that you're following that, that you always want to tighten the pinch bolt first. There's a lot of threads in here, so you can get really tight with it. Uh, you want to make sure that that pump position does not change. All right, so that's nice and tight. That's not going to go anywhere. So now we can uh, tighten the three on top. Okay, pump head assembly is set. Uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the handle together, throw the handle on here, uh, put our check valve and gauge kit uh, and our spout on the end of this and we'll be able to produce some water. Uh, so we'll go, uh, we'll go put that handle assembly together now. All right, so now we're gonna prepare the last couple pieces. First, we're gonna do the, uh, put the handle assembly together. It's easier to do that here on a table than over there because we've got these shims, uh, which take a lot of the wear when pumping. Uh, the best way to do this is you're actually gonna put a shim, shims are gonna go on the inside, your pin's gonna come from this direction. But first, one thing I know, wanna note is that this is the top of the bracket. So this is what should be facing up. Uh, and I'm, I'm kinda type A, so I wanna have all the pins in the, right dire in the same direction. So you can see the pin is up here the pin is up here. Uh, you know, if this was turned around, it'd be a different orientation. So uh, what we wanna do then is have the pin come from the backside. So we're gonna start putting the pin in from the backside here and bring it up to the level of the bushy or the shim. Then we're gonna bring in our lever arm and then we're gonna slip the other shim in there and push it all the way through. Okay, so handle assembly is now complete. Uh, this particular pump setup has the CV1 kit. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna do some setup here for what's gonna be on the spout. So we're gonna connect both, we're gonna put some Teflon tape uh, so that they can connect to a hose. They've got a hydrant uh, that they're planning to, and they need to pump into pressure to connect a hose to. Uh, so we'll want that on the end. We have our check valve and gauge kit here. That consists of a plug. 
consists of a three quarter inch nipple, a gauge, and a double tapped check valve. So, what we need to do is construct this. What you'll see is you'll see a little arrow right here on the check valve. That arrow is the direction of the water. So we know the water is gonna go that way. This is a three quarter inch nipple, just like the threads on the pump head. So this is gonna be between the pump head and the check valve. So we want it to go here. Now, like with all the other fittings, we wanna make sure they don't leak. So we put a couple wraps of Teflon tape around it. This is just kind of doing some prep here. Uh, we're gonna want to put a plug in here. And what that plug is gonna do is it's gonna allow, in the winter time if we use this, allow you to create a vacuum so that the weep hole will work correctly. So if, if it's freezing outside and you need to go pump some uh, into your pump pressure tank, you'd come out, you'd hook up your hose, you would pump it into your pressure tank, uh, and then when you were done, you would take this out for about a minute or so, and that allows air in so that the weep hole can weep. If you didn't do that, right, it's checked on this side of the check valve, so there's no air that can come in so the water can't go out. Uh, so we're gonna add that on there as well. Just use our press it wrench to get that tight. Next we have our gauge. Now this gauge will display what amount of pressure that you're pumping at to give you a sense of, of how full your tank is because the, 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 how full the tank is is directly related to how much pressure that you're experiencing. this get this kind of tight we may need to change the orientation on it once we get it on the on the pump all right so these components uh, if you don't have a check valve obviously this step right here if you don't have a cv1 kit this step right here isn't necessary uh, but for this particular one we do so what we're going to do now is we're gonna put the handle on. All right, so now let's put our handle on. Now, these are left-hand threads, which means we're not gonna do the normal clockwise to tighten it. We're actually gonna go counterclockwise. It can sometimes be a little bit awkward to get it started, but once you get those threads going, you're gonna go counterclockwise, okay? Get that down to the point where they're tight. Now we're going to tighten this up here in a second a little bit more. Now what you'll notice is that this doesn't line up no matter what you do and that's by design. So what we want to make sure is that piston on the very bottom is not going to bang against the bottom on every stroke. That's the four to six inches and that's why that matters. So what you got to do is you got to lift it up a little bit And then you can align the holes and once you get one of the bolts started it's a little bit easier So we're gonna go ahead and tighten these. This is a 3 16 Allen wrench size for these quarter 20s. Now these you're gonna to wanna to get nice and tight.
Okay. So our handle assembly uh, is now attached to the pump. Something we did forget here real quick was to tighten that pump rod. Uh, so make sure once you get those four bolts in and tight that you go ahead and grab the, the wrenches necessary to go ahead and tighten that pump rod to the clevis. Uh, the next thing we're going to do for this particular setup is we're going to put that check valve and gauge kit and the other hardware on the outlet. All right, so now we're going to put this check valve and gauge kit uh, on the outlet of the pump. So we're going to get those three quarter inch threads going. Our Teflon tape is all set to go. Tighten this up, make sure that it doesn't have any leaks. Be good on that connection. Get this street elbow. Probably get about right there. And then lastly, we'll get the hose adapter. To go the right way here. Grab our crescent wrench here. Make sure that our gauge is nice and tight. We're likely going to be pumping from this side, so convenience would have pumping over here. Okay, so everything's attached. It's time to see if we can, uh, if we can get water. Uh, the static water level here is about 40 feet or so. So it should take us around 20 or so pumps to get water up. You can definitely feel the water coming. Oh, I can hear it. And there we go. We have water. See there's a bit of bit of brown water coming through which isn't abnormal because you've got the water from the from the top of the well that it had gone into the pump. Um, and you know, sometimes there's iron in people's well and, and the water isn't quite as clear, but usually this clears up after running a bit of water through it. So there we go. The uh, pump's installed, we've got water. Uh, what I recommend at the end of the install here is to go back and double check how tight these are uh, and all the other uh, connections. just because things have been moving around and we want to make sure things are, are nice and tight so that they, uh, yeah, you can see this could have used a little bit more torque now, which is expected. And if you ever notice that your well cap starts to wobble a little bit, it's probably because it's continued to settle. And all you need to do is come out and, and retighten these bolts.
One thing to point out on these Beauchart's caps is that there is a set screw here. I don't like using that set screw. I've had a lot of customers over tighten that set screw and break the casting, uh, which is obviously not a good thing. You should be able to get it tight enough by just tightening the five bolts around the perimeter of it. Um, let's just tighten up these other bolts. We know that split flange is tight. It's almost touching here in this crack. So we'll just get that. Good. We'll hit the handle again. And voila, the uh, pump is installed. Uh, you know, we'll have other videos talk about maintenance and uh, what I do suggest is absolutely use this once or twice a month. Uh, it's going to keep the seals soft, uh, and it's a mechanical piece of equipment. It, it needs to be exercised, and you want to make sure that it's good to go in the, in the situation that you need. And if you let it sit for years, uh, the minerals in your water can cause problems with it if, it doesn't, if it's not operated. Uh, so the best thing to do is it takes five minutes. Come out, run the handle. Right? It's not going to take too many pumps because of the weep hole. This one doesn't take long because we've obviously got this in here. Uh, it's winter here in Nevada, so I'm gonna have to loosen that so that it, it drops down to the weep hole. Uh, but it's not gonna take too many pumps to get water going. Uh, and it's worth the time to come out and, and spend five, 10 minutes pumping water uh, maximum, put a gallon through it uh, a couple times a month, and then you'll have a lot better success. Uh, one last thing I would suggest is a couple months in the installation, check those bolts again, uh, just to make sure that as it settles that they're they're nice and tight. Uh, but that's a that's a simple pump installation. Uh, we'll be continue to add more videos and things about the the simple pump and and other elements of uh, maintaining it and, and as well as our, our DC power drive system. So thank you very much for your time.